was a big building project. Everything had to be built. So there was a, an unbelievable amount of structural work and consideration that had to go into everything. Alec is very, very good at that. These, I never miss them. These three we should probably take out, right? This is our department for flight plan. We looked at thousands of planes. Everything from 747s to crazy Russian cargo planes. We were sort of bound by what planes have looked like up until now, but we also are right on the cusp of this new age of air travel. It's so big. It's the biggest. What kind is it, Mom? It's an E-474. It's brand new. It's the first double-decker airplane that's ever been built as a functional shooting set. We have two levels, an upper deck and a lower deck. We have the hold. We have um, various galleys. There's nine closets on this plane, right? There's four up and there's five down. And nobody's checked any of them. There's uh, uh, seven galleys, there's the crew quarters, there's the holds, and kids can find places like that. It's basically 120 feet that you can see here. Galley four behind, and then there's galley two, lounge, first class cockpit in front. The overall length of the plane was about 250 feet. So long, very long. We fabricated everything from scratch. All the panels from the sides, the top, the ceiling pieces, the seats, the floor, everything. For example, you see the cockpit behind me. It's not an existing cockpit out of any existing plane. There's pretty much one cockpit that had been used in every movie for the last 15 years. It was destroyed on Castaway. They drove it into the water tank and shorted everything out. So we had to manufacture our own. So they took this thing behind me and carved it out of a solid block of foam, and then laid in all the buttons, dials, uh, video screens, everything else, um, in a matter of about four weeks. It was very important to me to develop a very clear color idea of the movie. We started working on picking a couple of colors. We actually did two or three different palettes with actual materials, paint colors, carpets, tile colors, metal finishes, colors for the curtains, fabrics. We could actually look at scenes and say, it would be great to have a color scheme like this for this scene. We have a space that is bright white um, for the first scene where we start to doubt that the girl ever was on the plane which gives it a sort of eerie, clinical, cold feeling. We could say we want the ceiling lower in this scene because it's more claustrophobic, or we want it more wide open because we don't want to tip the audience off toward anything. The movie had to be figured out completely before the first nail was hammered into wood. Because if we didn't call it early on, there was no way we could put the camera you know, up and do this. I know where I've seen you before. Cut. You actually built overhead railings that ran along the lengths of both corridors, where we could hook in a dolly that the grips built and from which the camera then hung. So basically, this is set up, and it actually will hold about 700 pounds. So we can have. And sometimes they actually put both sides of it together so you can have a camera that travels across the center section of seats. <laughs> Alec Hammond, the production designer, came up with some really clever ideas to enable us to do shots and to move the camera around so we wouldn't be trapped in just the aisles of the plane. You're crazy. You're all crazy. She was never on board. Nice. I carried her on board. Beautiful. That was fantastic. Oh. <laughs> that was weird. Wow. Wouldn't that yes. be funny? So you guys were all like, like, stuck against the wall. Like it's being yeah. over her on which is that other and back in. Gotcha. We built the plane to shoot. Um, that was, it was specifically engineered to be shot in. And that was as much of a consideration as the actual design of the aircraft um, from a just physical beauty standpoint. We talked about being able to shoot not as if you were outside the plane, but from the outside of the plane, basically over the exterior seats in as a good angle. So one of the challenges was trying to engineer the plane so the sidewalls could come out 
easily. All of the wall panels on the entire set are on this big truss that's right here, and they all hinge up into the air. So we're shooting through the actual side of the plane. It'll give them more time and flexibility in terms of how many shots they can get and also what kinds of shots they can get. Set. Action. All of the ceiling pieces over the aisle also hinge. It's almost like a flower. You can hinge the ceiling up on the set and hinge the bottom wall pieces out. We had a lot to shoot. So to sit around and wait for rows of seats to be taken in and out, that would have killed us. We tried to keep the space as interesting as we possibly could, and part of, uh, part of that was having about five or six lighting setups built into the plane that were very different from one another. You have a night light, a takeoff light, which is not quite as bright as the we're still on the tarmac light. This is the largest galley in the plane, galley two. Um, you can see the side light on here. The backlit panels. With the introduction of some side light and even some low side light from here and from other places, it makes people look better. A lot of these are practical. They either have things in them or not. Try to give, it's very difficult putting actors into a situation like this where they're not flight attendants. There's not a naturalness to necessarily dealing with some of this equipment. So the more things you can actually set up that they can physically do um, is helpful. A lot of these units we've gotten, they're for real. This is actually a $50,000 oven um, that we got for free because BE Aerospace uh, gave it to us as a product placement deal, which was fantastic. Um, and then all of these are, it's sort of real stuff set into our set. Um, and enough of the real stuff is there, so we actually, it looks real. It looks good. Um, it's interesting how many, you need a number of completely true details and then after you reach sort of critical mass on those, everything else just works. Whenever we're looking at two actors acting in a scene, what you'll see in the background are background actors at various points that have been very carefully placed, acting out their own little scenarios and their own little plays. Ready, background. Every single person that gets in the plane has been handpicked by Robert. We had several thousand people audition. We had 150 on the upper deck, we'll have 300 on the main deck. It's logistically an immense amount of work just moving that number of people on and off a plane. We have eight doors and uh, four stairways uh, to get people in and out of the planes. We also have to dress them every day, and they also have to have three changes of clothing. In case something gets spilled on them, something gets lost, we have a replacement for it. Every magazine that they're reading, we have to create. We have to clear all the artwork in it. Every computer graphic that they're looking at, we need to create. The Welcome to Alto Airlines intro to people boarding the plane is a morph between flight attendants, 20 people speaking 20 different languages. It used to take a month or two to do that. We basically had to do it in a day, put it together in about 24 hours and turn it around for us to be able to play back on the first day of shooting. I think it was about four days into the first week where we went, oh. We're on a plane, right. This is going to be tight, and it is. Yes, step out. It's quite crammed, quite claustrophobic. That just adds to the tension, I think, you know. Hopefully you'll feel that you're in there. And you're suffering yourself. <laughs> Having to do the vast majority of a film in one location, it's like creating a little world. That one thing that we're building has to serve an enormous variety of purposes. I love the designing period of the movie when everything is still possible. <laughs> it's very gratifying.